We're going to spend a little time this week talking about blindside blocks. And by definition, a blindside block is a block outside the free blocking zone against an opponent other than the runner who does not see the block coming. The key being, who does not see the block coming. What I say? He doesn't see the block coming. That is the key. Why is it a dangerous block? Well, because these type of blocks, as we've seen time after time, have devastating consequences because the player being blocked cannot prepare for the contact. Okay? That is the key. These are devastating blocks because the player being blocked cannot prepare for the contact. And we know what it looks like. We're going to see several plays to that effect. Now, it is illegal to initiate a blindside block with forcible contact unless the contact is made with open hands. So they, as a general rule, it's illegal to initiate a blindside block with forcible contact. And then we have the key, unless it is made with open hands. And we're going to see one or two plays dealing with how they, these blocks can be legal. Let's take a look at some of the plays. Many of the blindside blocks occur on kick plays, as we're going to see here. And we're going to see the receiving team player right here. He's lining them up and just lays them out. The official sees it and flags it. Got to be on high alert on kick plays for these type of plays. And what you see is, as we're going to see here, you can kind of see a player just lining him up. He doesn't see it coming. He's focused on making a tackle and he just blows him up. We have got to have a flag down on these and we do. Nice job here by the covering official. And here's another illegal blindside block by number four. What type of play? Kick play. These just jump out at you. He's lining up that, that uh, K player who is focused and intent on tracking the ball carrier. Number four just lines him up and takes him out. The defender here has no opportunity to defend himself from this vicious blindside block and we need a flag down on this play. Does this jump out? This jumps out and screams well behind or well well in front of the play and he just takes him out. Seek and destroy must be penalized. So we know the basic rule 943N which states it is illegal to initiate a blindside block with forcible contact unless made with open hands. Watch the players on the receiving team here. Do a great job. They're very well coached. And every blindside block is made legally with open hands. Use open hands. It reduces the amount of force to just wipe out a player. Here's Ill, That's legal block one. Here comes legal block two. Look at him extend his hands. Push him out of the way. A good legal block. And a third one. That's just enough. So remember, if the player has his hands extended, open hands, the block is legal. Wait till you see the next play. And before we look at the play unfold, let me give some video creds. I thank James Bird from the Maryland Board for sending this play in. And officials, please send me plays. I need them. So, here we're going to have a blindside block, and I want you to watch our uh, player here. Where is he? Here he is. He's extending his arms, and watch how he blows that guy up. So he's trying to pull a fast one on the officials. Look at him running in. Hey, I've got my arms extended. Remember, if you hit him with extended arms, technically it's not a foul, but he doesn't. Watch what he does. He lowers the booms. He's just flying in like a jet and hits this uh, 
pursuer chest to chest and blows him up. That is a foul. And we've got to get it. The crew did a great job getting this on the field. Again, he's trying to fool the officials. Look, I got my arms extended, and they're just wings here. And he just goes chest to chest. So be aware of it. Just because he's got his arms out does not mean this is not a foul. He blows them up, and he's keeping those arms extended just in an effort to fool the official. Hey, I've got my arms extended. That means I can just blow this player up chest to chest. This is a foul that we've got to get 100% of the time, and the crew does. Now it's time for the weekly reminder plays. These are plays that don't fit into a specific category that we might be covering that week, and they jump all over the place, but they're good learning plays. Here we go. This is a try for point, and the rules are different in Federation. If this try is blocked, what happens? Blow it dead, as the crew does here. Might upset the fans a bit, but the rule is, once that kick is clearly not going to be good, we blow it dead. If you see it here on video, you'll know what to do when it happens in your game. We've got a blocked try. Soon as it is clear this kick is no good, we've got to kill it, as the crew does here. Hear the whistles. Nice job by the crew. Just remember... If this were a field goal attempt, we got to let the play continue. But here the crew collect correctly shuts it down. Nice job. Quick quiz question. Field goal attempt. Snapped at the 26. Kicked from the 32, right? The kick is no good. It dies in the end zone where are we spotting this ball. Apparently, several of our crews last week didn't know. They thought, hey, we spot this back at the point of the kick. We're at the point of the snap. Nope. The answer is we're spotting this ball on the 20. Federation rules. Textbook, offensive pass interference. 13 is going to just pick him off. We've got a wing official down here on the goal line. He stays on his key for two seconds, and you're going to see most of the fouls. One 1,000, two 1,000, boom, there it is. Defender is just cleared out of the play by number 13, frees up 14. This is an excellent call, and officials need to be aware of this. OPI, great job by the covering official. Last week we talked about tripping the runner, a new Federation rule for 2019, but we can't forget the old tripping rules. Let's watch the left tackle here. Good job by the umpire seeing this, and we'll see it better on the replay. But uh doesn't happen too often, but uh, watch him. Hey, wait a minute. I know this guy. In any event, it doesn't happen too often, but you see the interior lineman is beat and he sticks his foot out, that is a trip that we want to call. So good job by the umpire getting that, and we got to be aware of these interior line trips. That is a foul. Personal foul, tripping, offense, number 74. Now here is a couple of well-trained football officials. We talked about this last week, positioning and communication on a tight play on the pylon. Look what we've got. Got our H right on the sideline. We've got our deep wing right on the goal line. And notice, he's not planted up here. He allows himself plenty of space. And if you need more, keep backing up. But look at this. This is perfection. I love when I see this kind of officiating. Perfect positioning to see what is there to be seen. One official right looking down the sideline and our deep wing on the goal line. You gotta love it.
We have lots to discuss on this play. First, this is the very first play from scrimmage in this game. We've got a 35-yard run down the sideline, and we've got a late hit out of bounds that we don't have a flag on. What is the importance of this play? First, it is the first play. Second, we have a dangerous late hit out of bounds that we miss. We get this foul. It sets the tone for the remainder of the game that some of this nonsense will not be tolerated during the game. And, of course, the team that committed this foul had another late hit during the game that was not called and a couple of taunts that were called. Now, let's look at the play in close. We can see him running down the sideline. Is the spot on a 35-yard gain really that important? Absolutely not. And we can see the official. All he is doing is concerning himself with the spot. Got to get the spot right. No. And then he turns to the outside. As he comes down the sideline, he needs to be focusing on the action off the field of play. And we won't miss this. Now let's get in a little close. Number two's got a big target on his back. And we can see the arm of the defender wax him right in back of the head. Wax him and then wax him with a right. We got a left and then a right. We got a left, a right. This is a foul. This is a foul. This is a foul. And the official is looking down to ensure that he has the spot. So the important thing to remember is 35 yard run. Who gives a darn about the spot if we're a yard or so off? The officials must have their head on a swivel and be looking to the outside instantaneously. As soon as this player crosses into the sideline, we got to have our focus on the players, not on the spot. We don't care about the spot here. Left and a right. Left and a right. Left and a right. And an official looking at the spot, and then he turns to the action but the foul has already occurred. We gotta have our heads on a swivel. Here we're gonna have a 35 yard catch and run. Let's watch our official as he moves down the sideline. This is what we mean by head on a swivel. As Soon as the runner goes out of bounds, right there, do we really care where the spot is if we're off by our yard, even though the official gets the spot correct here? Watch the official's head looking to the outside, making sure nothing happens to the runner, looking over to the left, and now look at his head. On a swivel, the action on the players that exited the field to play on that side, then back. Head on a swivel, that's what we mean. Now I want you to watch how the runner is tackled on this play. This is a safety foul that we missed. Now granted, this would have been a tough one to get. He's in the traffic. But this is a spearing foul against the runner. You're going to see the defender contact the runner on the runner's helmet with the crown of his helmet by dipping his head and attacking. Watch him dip his head and attack. I think I can get in a little bit closer. Right in here. Let's watch the defender. Dips his head and attacks with the crown of his helmet. And under Federation rules, using the crown of your helmet to strike an opponent is a spearing foul. That's rule 2-20-1C. Now granted, again, this is a tough one to see. But boom, there it is. It happens so quick, but as soon as you see that defender dip his head and attack with the crown of the helmet, that is a foul for spearing. Now, contacting any opponent by taking aim above the shoulders would be a 2-20 targeting foul. And remember, this is only 15 yards. We do not disqualify unless it is a flagrant foul. So remember, all players are protected from targeting, and a defenseless player is a primary point of emphasis. So we need to recognize this again. Tough one to get, but that is, see this head dip, he attacks with the crown to the helmet, 
that is a foul we want to try to get. We want to get the safety fouls. Let's watch 53. He's going to go off the screen then come back on at the end of the play. Umpire's got to get this. As soon as we see this player, 53, lower his head, right there, that is a punishing blow. Lowers his head, leads with the crown, right there. We have got to get this. This is huge. We've got the umpire staring right at it, and we don't have a flag down. This is a foul. This is a foul. This is a foul. We have got to get the safety fouls. Can't miss them. We need 100% of these. Let's keep an eye on this one. That is a taunt. This is not the National Football League where this would be tolerated. This is a taunt. In Federation, the umpire sees it and flags it appropriately. Nice job. Look at me, everybody. I just got a first down. Textbook, taunt, correct flag. Nice job. And yet another taunt. Same team. You know it when you see it. Everybody, look at me. I'm number one. Our official sees it and flags it appropriately. Let's look at the positioning of our deep wing. Again, it's always good to see. Excellent mechanics. Look at me, everybody. I'm the best. I am number one. Got to get this flag. We got to have it, and we do. Our official sees it. Look at the spacing right here. Plenty of space. He's not hugging the pylon. The flag goes up, and he continues to officiate the play. Superb call. On this play, we're going to have a correct call down on the bottom screen for defensive holding, but the coach is not happy about it and comes out onto the field. So uh, when he's out on the field, technically that is a foul. So you want to warn first by uh, in the pregame, the referee should tell the coach, Coach, you got to stay off the field. Do a little preventive officiating in the pregame. Here, this is an NCAA game, and they wanted a flag on this coach, but a lot of talking pregame will help. Because just remember, the, the warning, 5-yard penalty, 15-yard penalty sequence by rule is only used when a coach is out of the box, but not on the field. So when we do have a coach on the field, hopefully we will not have a coach on the field. But if we do, technically it is a foul, but you can prevent that by just talking to the coach in the pregame. Say, Coach, just make sure you're off the field at all times. Preventive officiating could help you out a lot in this regard. Finally, in conclusion, let me say just this, or many things. First, officials, please send me huddle play clips as soon as you can after your game describing what is shown in the play. And we're taking the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all for learning purposes. If you can't take criticism, you're in the wrong line of work. Second, the official high school season starts this weekend in Maryland. When you're out on the field, the kids demand 100% focus. Give it to them from the opening kickoff to the final whistle. 100% focus each and every play. And when you're officiating, it's a good general rule to follow. Keep the whistle out of your mouth and keep the flag in your pocket. You want to just try to throw as few flags as possible and when you do throw, it's got to be a foul that's screaming, I am a foul, I am a foul, I am a foul, throw your flag. If you think you saw a foul, you didn't see it. It's really got to be there. So with that, let's kick off the 2019 Maryland season. And good luck this weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Send me those plays.